This is what it's all about. Sunday afternoon footy in the greater west of Sydney. Two very different tribes bound by the same golden rays of hope. That's the great thing about the beginning of every season. My team, your team, everyone's team, both sun bridal hope and promise. The Penrith Panthers powered through 2010, finishing second before their hope and promise died a quick death come September. Newcastle, finally, the once mighty knights just might have unearthed another saviour. Again with red and blue Hunter Cold Dust running through his veins. Things haven't looked this promising since the son of a Cessnock miner was running the show. Ah, oh, I love the Sunday footy. So let's get them out there. Get TV's finest daytime reality show back on the road. Sunday afternoon football. The Panthers and the Knights. Right here on the home of the best. Nine's wide world of sports. We have glorious weather for spectators, but very trying condition for the players as we welcome you to a sunny and hot Centrebet Stadium for this clash between the Panthers and the Knights. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for our first Sunday afternoon coverage of the year. And I have to say, two of the more entertaining teams doing battle. Last year, Penrith scored more tries than anybody else to finish top four. And whilst the Knights were back in 11th spot, they played patches of scintillating football, just not consistently enough. And with their best ever in Andrew Johns, and Joey, a late boost for the home side with the inclusion of one of their real stars. Yeah, Michael Jennings has put his hand up to play. In doubt all week with a hamstring injury. It's a huge boost for the team. Uh, he's one of those rare players where you just throw him the ball and he can create something out of nothing. A real speed star, he'll have a huge impact on the game. Well, I have great pace out wide, but I know that you're a fan of what they offer in the middle of the ruck as well. Yeah, along with the Canberra Raiders, I think they've got the best front row rotation in the game. They've got the legend Petro Sivnasiva and a young Tyro, Tim Grant, up front. Look, I think he's a future rep player, and on the interchange, Sam McKendry is a great player. Well, they are part of this 17-man squad, named by Matt Elliott. The only change is Michael Jennings in the centre. At fullback, Lachlan Coote on the wings, Michael Gordon and Shandor Earl. Brad Ty will partner Michael Jennings in the centres. He'll play in jersey number 20. Travis Burns is the 5'8", Luke Walsh the 7. A back row of Luke Lewis, Trent Waterhouse and Nigel Plum. Tim Grant, Kevin Kingston and the skipper Petro Sivanasiva. Coming off the bench, Sam McKendry and Matthew Bell. Adrian Pertell and Masada Yusefa. They are coached by Matt Elliott. Uh, Joey, the Newcastle Knights in recent seasons have struggled for the right combination in the halves. They had options again going into this game and they've gone for a, a man on debut to play outside of Jared Mullen. Yeah, the youngster George Illawarra halfback from the under-20s is the under-20s player of the year two years ago, Bo Henry. A boom player, plays halfback, playing 5'8 today. He's a player with, with great organisational skills, a beautiful ball player. But today, I think he'll be testing the defence. They'll run a lot of traffic at him, the Penrith Panthers, but I wish him well. I think he's in for a big game. The Knights have a great record at this venue. They've won seven of their last nine. This is our lineup at fullback and captain Kirk Gidley. On the wings, James McManus and Aquila Uate. In the centres, Junior Sow and Wes Naguama. In the halves, 5'8", Bo Henry, and at halfback, Jared Mullen. A strong back row with Chris Houston, Zeb Taylor and Neville Costigan. And up front, Antonio Cafusi, Isaac De Goyce and Ivan Tuomavavi. On the interchange bench, Matt Hilda, Corey Patterson, Richie Faiso, Dan Toller, and their coach by Rick Stone. Newcastle taken out by their captain and fullback Kurt Gidley. Their record here at Penrith is incredible. They've won seven of their last nine at this venue. In fact, overall, they've played 18 times for 10 wins at Penrith. The home side have won only five, and three of the matches of the 18 played have been drawn results. So the number six just going out there, Bo Henry, 21 years of age, on debut today, Toyota Cup Player of the Year in 2009. And Rick Stone has burnt the midnight oil, analysing this kid and obviously thinks he can solve the problem at number six. Chris Houston returns to the NRL today, first time since the semi-finals exit in 2009. On a very, very hot day, Jared Mullen played just that one origin back in 07. And Newcastle obviously need him to be at his best this year. Of course, their biggest off-season buying has been Neville Costigan. Six origins behind him and a grand final ring last year. This is his fourth club, Neville. And he may well provide the start that uh, the Knights will be looking for. 
talking about the pack. It's a strong one. Seven Asiba taking them out. Telstra Premiership trophy there in the foreground. This is their 45th year in the Premiership and their 500th game at Penrith. Peter told them they made the finals last year. They went out in straight sets in week two. Very strong up front. Petro, Trent, Luke Lewis and off the bench, McKendry. They trialled against this team. Newcastle at Port Macquarie. They beat them 28 and 22. But the last time they played in competition, they also beat them 28-10 in round 13 last year. Both clubs have won the Premiership twice. The trophy that they ran passed on their way out. Can it go to one of these cities for its third time? Referees are Ben Cummins on camera. Tony right, Delaceris. 33 degrees outside. Hot, you're right. And uh, okay, certainly not what you would call good weather for football. Henry kicks off then, the kid from Shell Harbour. Junior with Warilla, Warilla Gorillas, believe it or not. And then a little bit of a fumble from Lachlan Coop at the back. Before he offloads and the first play of the ball from Tim Grant. And taking it ahead in the, in the headgear is Nigel Plum. Ball played and so Penrith work it up the middle and find Michael Gordon. And Mick gets it outside the 30, which is a very good run. Tenacious, in fact. Eventually was tackled by Isaac de Goyce, and here is Sivan Asiba now. The big fella who will lay claims again for rep jumpers. In fact, you recall last year, he basically went to the coach and said, I'm not playing well enough, so that's the style of man he is, but he'll be trying to get back there. The kick through from Walsh, formerly from Newcastle, kicking it to McManus. And he's lost the ball, he's taken a heavy hit at the same time. Oscar. They're going to have a look at it. Oh, well, he's sitting up. He's actually up Walk on his away. knees now, James Walk McManus, away. who missed a lot of last year again with injury. Travis, Travis, Good to see him on, back on Walk the flank. Away, and he's caught one. Boys, like a swinging arm. Getting down low, and it's Luke Walsh that's hit him high. Initial contact. Number. So this will be a penalty. Kurt Gidley was... Luke! Straight on the Take spot back, to Walsh. render his protest. And Walsh is being called out. Hey. He's hit him high. It's on the court. Checkered season last year, as far as injuries are concerned, for McManus. On the mark. Yeah, good. Well, the touch finder. On the Western touch line at the 40 metre line. And De Goyce uses Costigan, so Neville gets his first touch in Newcastle colours. And De Goyce at the halfway line comes to Junior Sauer, whose future looks as though it might be in the balance at the moment. There'll be plenty looking for him, though, I can assure you. Here's Kafusi. Antonio playing it back to De Goyce. And then for Mullen, and he goes away for Henry. And his ball goes to ground. It's over there with the, the flying Uate. And he'll play the ball 30 metres out from the Penrith line. Down at the northern end of the ground. They're running towards it. And Gidley comes across, shows it a couple of times. In and away, in and away. But he's crabbing across the ground. And Walsh was there to put him down, together with Brad Ty. Himself a former Nova Castrian. The ball has been rolled down in towards the fullback, and Coop has done well. He's come outside the 10 metre zone. And he's held there again by Isaac de Goyce. And now for Brad Tuck. Who from memory got a couple of tries in the last encounter they played against one another in that match round 13 last year. This is Travis Burns. Your scene duty at Manly and been to the Cowboys. Penalty. All his. He's got the whole lot of them for inside the 10, the entire shooting gallery from Newcastle. Mate, First round here, of the Telstra Premiership for 2011. I didn't and go away. No, 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 mate. We want. I didn't tell you where to kick it, mate. Penalty's back here. Can you give us kick it here. Oh. 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 You might say pedantically recalling it. Mate. But they've all been told 
time and time again. And we saw a penalty last night against Manly. A dropout that was dropped outside the line. Another one of the things that are going to bother people, for sure. I think I just heard somebody ask which blade of grass. Which blade of grass, yeah. Here's Waterhouse playing the ball. Welsh goes short. Sivan Asiva takes it up towards the 20-metre line. So the first real attacking opportunity for either side. And Kingston beautifully. Luke Lewis is nine metres out from the line. Desperate tackle by Kafusi. And they go left. And here is Welsh putting Waterhouse on um, Nagama. Ball comes out and Gidley comes back. And then Lewis. Lewis brings him down low. Grant goes over the top. A hurtful tackle. And that was zero. So this is one for Uate. Quila. That looks like Zeb Taya just outside the 20 metre line. Was. The 10 goes away. That's the front row forward, Tua Mavave. Ball played on the 30 metre line. De Gros goes over. And here's Houston. Or Houston, I should say. Rehearses not as you like, boy. Bound to get it wrong. To the halfway line they come now. It's not a problem. Newcastle. We don't I'm, in, have I'm in good company, Peter. There's Mullen. Drives it down, oh, it's a delightful kick. Good kick, and there's going to be a lot of these instances today where they suck it in, find some, some ways of rolling the clock down, get some breath back. Certainly, Rabbits, I love the Golden West, but if the barometer is saying, or the thermometer is saying 33 out here, the thermometer's broken. It's about 38. No, I don't think you mean barometer, you mean thermometer. That's what I said, thermometer. I corrected no, myself. Sorry, I didn't need you to correct me, I corrected myself. But I'm glad you were listening. Listen, you were listening. It's 38 out here, Rabbit, so I'm telling you. Something like Lennox Walker. This is Earl. We'll be taking a drinks break at the 20 minute mark. That's Plum. And he's put down just inside the 20, up the middle of the ground. This is Tim Grant. Big rap there from Andrew Johns in the preview. He's forecasting rep on us for him. And he's going to get a penalty. And Isaac de Goyce has finished up getting involved in a scuffle with Grant. That might be inadvisable, I think, Isaac. It was a big thing. I'm not sure if he thought Tim Grant was lashing out at him. They sort of got tangled up, which is why he eventually conceded the penalty. Tim. I've got control, you've got the penalty. I know, just don't go on with it, mate, all right? The guys, they sort of get tangled up. They'll go down in the tackle. Let's have a look. It's all good. This, little bit of that, little bit of something. Now he's got him tangled up, throws him down. The guys didn't like that. Oh, well, what's wrong? It's all good. So on the halfway line, they take the tap. Waterhouse, five metres into Newcastle territory. Walsh for Sivanasiba, and the big captain leading by example with hit-ups in the early part of the game. Nothing too flash, and now it's come away from Burns, and it's linked up with Gora Coote, and Coote goes out to Brad Ty. Ty is taken by Bo Henry with help from his number 12 on that occasion, Costigan. Here they are with a chance, Nigel Plum. And he will play it within 10 metres of the line, as you can see. And then Kingston, Travis Burns, good ball, good decoy, off the ball. Lewis, oh, that pass only needed to be accurate. Here's Jennings now, and Jennings is asking some questions. Kafusi puts him down, together with Tuomo Vave. Played by Jennings in the middle of the ground. Walsh then to the reliable boot. It's gone towards McManus, and uh, McManus had it, lost it. Fourth in goal by Newcastle. Uh, yeah, Junior Sauer racing off. Last he was hoping for a That's play on there. Side. Possible granting, and there's a player being held back as well, please. We're going to have a look at a few things here from the Luke Walsh bomb. McManus got the first touch, no doubt about that. Michael Gordon was trying to sneak in and get the dregs, chases her onside. Beautiful move on the far side by Luke Lewis. Great footwork to beat Jared Mullen. That broke down. 
you almost misjudge that. And it's almost went over his head. He's dropped it. It comes loose. It's missed by Gordon. And eventually Sauer puts it down. We come back for the line dropout. Looking for he put it away, has he, McManus? It, it is Junior Sal that actually forces the ball. I heard the referee say uh, to, to check for a player being held out of the player. I, I didn't see anything suspicious there. Uh, no try has been called. I would have thought that was fairly obvious. We'll take a break and come back. Back at uh, Penrith now for the restarts. Nil all after seven and three quarters. Oh, yeah. Mullen with the dropout, oh. dropping it well behind the line, and taken on the full in the bread basket by Lachlan Coot. And here's Tim Grant going back to be met by the forwards. Houston number 13 penalty. You're crowning there. You're crowning. So it's a penalty again going to Penrith, and it's knees crowding the player trying to play the ball. What are you doing, mate? We're going to kick for goal Petro. here. Petro. Chris Houston. Oh, see you, boys. Will be the f well, he hasn't done anything. Chris Houston, he's just got up back into position as marker. And if there was an error, it was from the man playing the football, in my opinion. When I call move, you've got to give me space to play the ball. Well, just let's have a look at it again, Peter, because we've got time with uh, Michael Gordon taking the kick. Well, they're concerned with... with with how he uses his, his lower body to to cramp the player. That all looks fine to me. He, he gets out, he steps back, can't do any more. The referee. In fact, the pass from the dummy half looked like it might have been fractionally forward, but he indicated with his knee that the man playing the ball had been crowded by the use of the knee. Yeah, he was saying Houston should have backed up earlier, but even at slow motion there, Houston never had a chance to get back. Here's Michael Gordon taking the kick at goal. They can't get them all right, you know, Ray. Referees. No, of course. They'll be wrong now and then. There's a bit of a change coming over you. It's, it's for the better, I might add. So whatever medication you've been on, please stay on it. Here's Gordon's kick, and it's straight between the uprights. So there's the first points of the day to Penrith Michael Gordon. If you actually ring the club, you'll get him answering the telephone. But he's got a bit of a, an art uh, going for him there, and answering the telephone for the club. Well, well, who's doing it while he's here playing football? Well, it's called pre record I'll ring now and see who answers. I'll well, just Michael Ford. There's some research. It's a difficult game for the players this afternoon. It's different because it's, it's four-quarter football. A lot of teams are actually only starting to get on top after a 20-minute period. Today, Apart from having to really concentrate in these tough conditions, Stay behind. they've got to start again after 20 minutes, and then they've got to start again after 60 minutes. So it's it's a little bit of a different approach. Do you want to make you take it over? You're right. Michael Gordon just answered the phone at Penrith Leash Club. <laughs> so, so here's Petro bringing it back to the 10 metre line as they come away from that end. They're defending. She's really the the trotting track end of the ground at the south uh, at the at the north i should say grant has met hard by kafusi couple of the big men coming together good collision that one and then short away to shanda shanda Earl inside his own red line for walsh and then he gives it off to lewis and lewis just runs across the face there of michael gordon who i thought go to dummy half he didn't kingston pushed him out of the road and Welsh puts a kick in from just on his own side of halfway. Uate, you might say glides back. Yeah, that's probably the best word. He glides back to take the ball and then take the tackle. And Mullen gives the ball away to Gidley, and Gidley is hit hard by Plum. Good conventional low tackle. Ty had a little piece of it. Costi didn't know look pass, and it's going to Junior Sal. And just for a moment, I thought this stocky centre was on his way. Brad Ty making the tackle. De Goyce out from Dubby Half. He knows they're tired. He knows they're not organised. And Big Tim Grant said, here, take this as a square up for you, little fella. Now it's gone to Bo Henry, and Henry tries to go through. And they're 30 metres away from the Penrith line. Five gone now for the red, white and blue of Newcastle. As it goes over now for the kick off the boot of Mullen. It was rushed. It'll bounce awkwardly for Coop. And it then does him a favour and goes onward 
and over the dead ball line. I'm ready, mate. I'm ready. He's oh, right looking back. for the quick tap oh. kick here. And we've got one that's it's about as good as you'll get. The Newcastle Knights are aware to it and had their line set quickly as well as Sydney receiver. Another touch. Bit of a step back to left. Good run. Picks up 10 tough metres. i tell you who's hurt. The 12. Neville Costigan. He's clutching in his right arm, his right forearm, as you see on the pictures, provided by the best team of sports cameramen in the business. Played now by Jennings and then back from Kingston to Walsh to Plum. Takes the shoulder of Sow and he'll play the ball 32 metres out. Sow's on the ground, he's okay. Walsh goes very high. Here comes Gidley for the leap. No, you aren't, he beat him to the punch. You aren't, he sees a little gap, he goes through it. And eventually, Sivan Asiva stops his progress for Luke Walsh to dive on board. And just as well, Petro did come up with a tackle. Here is the last man. You are to beat Sim, he's under the posts. Well, that would have been an absolute treat to watch if you follow Newcastle or Rugby League. The flying Uate was almost into vacant pasture. Now this is Wes Magana with the orange boots. Two nil in favour of Penrith, a penalty goal. Gidley sweeps it, Mullen runs across, turns it in to Fusi on the merry-go-round, the hurdy-gurdy from Nigel Plum. He wants to stay out there, Neville Costigan, but, but real concern. I think he'll be coming off shortly as last tackle. Mullen goes high and straight to Coote. And the, the contest, it came oh, on. Oh, oh. It's a try for Mullen. I'm pretty confident it'll be a try. And he's going to point to the spot. Ben Cummins gives a try for Jared Mullen. And a little bit of irony in that, you would think. The kick going up high. Lachlan Coote spilling the football. And Newcastle get their first try of the afternoon off the boot of that man, Jared Mullen. All the kick, all the chases are on side to his left. He deliberately just put it straight up in the air, and it's difficult for Coote because he can't get a lot of momentum. And it comes off his chest, and the man who kicked the football followed through and had a simple task of picking it up and running the remaining five to six metres. Comes off Coote, goes back, everything OK, and Ben Cummins saw it exactly that way and had no hesitation in giving the try. There might have even been a Penrith player offside accidentally. Brad Ty, I'm talking about, but that has no effect on Newcastle. They're allowed to play on with the advantage. And he gets the try. I told you he played one origin in 2007. And I'm hoping on behalf of all Newcastle supporters that this is the year that Jared Mullen really puts his mark on it. Yeah, the Knights' halves have got to get going forward a little bit more, though. Prior to that, there was a lot of sideways stuff from Newcastle. The players running sideways and just standing and passing sideways. Now, if it's a tactic and they're just looking to run the big Penrith players around, well, we'll see later in the game. If it's not, they need to straighten up pretty quickly. So here's the kick at goal, and it's away. It's no goal. It's 4-2, and I think it's bad news for Costigan, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, terrible news, Rab. You see number 12, Neville Costing in there, holding his arm, going out the tunnel. He actually hit Petro's knee here. You see him at Petro's sidestep. He goes halfway through. The arm comes in. Whack. Look at that. You hit that knee, you're going to come off second best. How many people have come off second best with something frontal on Petro Sivan receiver? It's that low tackle in front on again. Here we have a penalty at the halfway line. Yeah, you'll find Trent Waterhouse and possibly Jennings on the far side were in front of the kicker. 11. They'll get the message shortly, these players, that yeah, mate, yeah. it's going to be inch perfect. They, they're better to be a yard behind the line than an inch in front of it. That's just a warning shot. There's no need to be up on the line like that. Why not be a half a metre behind the line and travelling at pace? He's failed to find touch here, Jared Mullen. Earl did well to catch the ball just in the field of play. And head centre field close to his own 30. In fact, he makes it and loses it. Loses the ball. Tio Mavave and Houston brought him down, Shanda Earl. He'd done all, all the work. It was a lovely take. This was the kick. He went very, very much on the adventure. And then all of this good work for 
Penrith is undone by losing the ball. Well, it's a pretty untidy minute of the play, isn't it? I mean, Penrith penalised at the kickoff for real discipline, being in front of the kicker, then you don't find touch with your penalty shot and drop the ball and tackle. Come on, boys. Uwate, Uwate almost through. Walsh clinging on, Waterhouse cleaning up, and then De Goyce. It's come away now for Zeb Taylor, and Taylor is 22 metres out from the line. Newcastle with a try, leading Penrith with a penalty goal. And that is Chiomavabe. 15 out, centre of the ground. De Goyce has been busy. Shows it once, shows it twice. Goes back and then Henry goes to Junior Sauer. Ball is lost. Advantage for Coote. Advantage Penrith. So quickly there is Nigel Plum. He's upended and put away 15 out. McKendry's gone on. Sivan Asiba's come off. Rabbit, so I just want to ask Andrew Johns a question. I made the comment about the Newcastle halves and even Kurt Gidley travelling sideways a little bit. Andrew, do you think this is more a tactic or are you a little unhappy with the direction they're taking? Yeah, I don't know, Gus. Uh, we'll see, as you said, we'll soon see as Penrith go on the attack. Yes. Jennings, we've got you, Rabs. No, it's, it's OK because it's gone forward off Jennings, Andrew. I, I was fully aware of an overlap that had developed, but then when Michael got the ball, it squirted out and went forward. So you carry on with that. It was an interesting question for well, I don't Gus. really know whether it's a game plan, whether it's the tactic is to run this big Penrith team around and then go through the middle after you tire them out. But I agree with you, Gus. They're playing very sideways. And for a player like Mullen, he's best when he's running straight. And you've seen the first five games. The halves who've been playing straight have been playing the best. Can you find out, Andrew, if it's possible, uh, what the, the prognosis is on Neville Costigan? Yeah, I just spoke to the doctor then. They, they're hoping it's just a bruised arm, so they're going to monitor him, but he could be back. OK, the boys are going to take a drink. Uh, the boys are going to take a drink. The boys are going to take a drink. So, Gus, we better have one at the same time. Sterling, get the drinks. I'm with you. I'm back at uh, Penrith to Centibet Stadium, and okay, uh, second row is this match about to get underway after second the row is down. Adam McDougall yeah, right realises he's not playing. He was given... Compassionately, because of the death of his father, Gill, who was a wonderful footballer. Here is Newcastle now. And that looks like Matt Hilder, is it, who's out there now? No, it was uh, it was Jared Mullen, and now the 15, Patterson, is tackled on the 40 meter line. So I'll just come back to that little tribute for Gill in a moment. This is Houston, taken down by Lewis and Grant and Kingston. To Goyce and then Mullen, and now it's over to Gidley, and Gidley tries to weave a passage through, and he's taken down by Lewis, and so to Goyce and gives the ball away then to Mullen. So much of these no look passes coming into the game, I just wonder, I sometimes wonder if they're not overdoing it. Gidley, kick is good, oh, Gordon was better. And they're trying to force him back, but he's so strong in the, the leg department, he drives out. He's had a great 20 minutes, yeah, almost 20 minutes as Michael Gordon, plenty of involvement, and he needed to be good there too, because Corey Patterson is an obvious target for Newcastle. He's good in the air, a very tall man. The number 15 just got bumped out of it there. And they'll look to kick to him again if they get an opportunity as Penrith. Phil Earl brings it up to centre. Yes, Gil McDougall. He played 89 first grade games. He played for Wests in grand finals in 62 and that famous 63 grand final. Balmain and Adam Luke and Ben, of course, inherited Gill's talents. And uh, Adam out of this team on compassionate grounds today. Our sympathies go off to the McDougall family in the loss of Gill. Ball to be played by Uate. Wrapped up a hat trick of victories, the horse yesterday at Warwick Farm. Played then by Chil Mavave, and here is the 17 Dan Tola. 42 metres out from his line. It is 4-2. This is Bo Henry and Junior Sow. Walsh couldn't handle him. He's too big and too strong down in that thigh department. He bumped him off and he is tackled by Grant, De Goyce, Gidley, Gidley, Mullen, Mullen left foot, rolling onward, looks as though it's going to be okay, it's going to make two play, oh, he touched that ball, it's a knock on in goal by the defending team, it's a line dropout. 
Go on that side, hang out him up. Yeah, lovely weighted kick there by Mullen. The low grubber kick. Coot was hoping it would roll dead, but it takes a little bounce up in the air now. Now it's obvious he's got to play at it, and then he just, for some reason, puts the right duke out and gives it a tap. And that's an infringement right there, line dropout. 20 seconds gone, guys. A little better there from the Knights. A couple of times there, their halves no, no, actually the straightened up and started to jink their way through the line. I suspect that maybe the early ball movement was to run that's the Panthers penalty. around in the heat. That's a penalty. He's, got him. He's in front of the line, Lachlan Keep. He's got him. So they've gone twice for the same infringement, really. And not taking the kick on the spot. I know, it's pretty hard, mate. Hard line, sir. Oh, you couldn't get any closer to that then. Mate, it's not hard at all. All we've got to do is get number 20 onside, mate. Oh, hang on, no, we've got... No, he's off, offside on the kick. It's not hard. So we've got Michael Jennings, who was offside from halfway with the, Benny a, a restart. Well, that's just absolute set, laziness. Absolute laziness. That's it. I've got to be honest with you, I thought... I thought he was pinning or looking very much down at the spot where the ball was right. dropped. Let's stay with this. They're right on the attack. They're five out. And De Goyce goes on. Mullen across. And he finds a hard-running flat Zentea. And he might have lost that ball. Touch judge said no. Play on. Waterhouse asked the question. It's come out now. Tiumavave. Tola. And Tola will play it. Seven metres out from the line. Uh, Pertell is out there now. Here comes De Goyce. Back to uh, Henry. Ben Gidley now. How he spins, he spins, he's over the line! That's a brilliant piece of work by Junior Sal. He has reached right out there and put it down. He's an excellent finisher, Junior Sal. Always has been since coming into the top grade. Not that long ago. He's a Kiwi international. I thought he'd actually wasted a, an opportunity after they'd established an overlap. He got the job done. Now, Michael Jennings on the far side is the second man in. He was offside, but also have a question mark under the post as well from where the dropout was taken. Now, if he'd have passed it there, James McManus probably would have scored in the corner. But Junior Sow keeping that ball-carrying arm away from the ground beats three. They'd established the overlap there, and that was realised by Michael Gordon, who came racing in. Excellent work from Sow to keep his head. Now, the, for the time Sow got the ball, I understand what you say, Peter, if he passes. But I always had the feeling he'd score anyway. He, he just gives me that impression. The few times he's handled it today, the first man tackling can't contain him. He's very strong down below. He's got good footwork and power. And once he swiveled back in field, he, he just got the feeling he'd put the ball down, which he did. Gidley. And he keeps it low, but drives it between the uprights. So it's a converted try for Newcastle. And they lead by eight points after 25 minutes. Andrew Johns is on the sideline today. Yeah, I, I agree with Gus. They can't handle Junior Sow today. Every time he gets the ball, he makes a half break. But today, the, I'm just looking at him here. He's standing right in front of me. His legs are absolutely massive. Look at this. Spins out of the play. Absolutely explosiveness. Such a hard man to stop. Just going back to what created that opportunity for them, I was convinced that the referee was watching this ball being dropped outside the line, and it was, but in defence of Tony Delaceris, the offside player was called by the other referee, Ben Cummins. I think he could have got them on a double whammy, to be honest with you. And as we've said a couple of times, if it's pedantic, it's pedantic, but they've all been told... And they're all playing on the level playing field in regard to those dropouts. Here's a penalty now. Well, well, it's the rule, rabbits. They're all aware of it, and they've been told zero tolerance. Now, if they tell you zero tolerance, they've just been caught offside at the kickoff, and then they they do it at the line dropout. That's really poor discipline. You can't blame anyone else but the players, providing, of course, the referees are consistent with it. They'll be consistent. No, well, that's that's that's. For another argument on another day. Here is the Joyce, and they go quick and short, and Gidley knocked on. And my point being, and I said it to Bill Halligan on the phone this morning, one of the other things that he was talking about was that the near side props having their outside foot forward. I haven't seen that happen this weekend, so don't talk to me about consistency. Well, it all went astray. That play from the, the, the start from the, the penalty, and we saw Gidley, he thought the pass was going across in front of him. Didn't expect the football, out it came. 
Here's the scrum, Rabbits. What are you, what are you talking about? The, the, the props with their legs I'm up. I'm saying the, the near side prop should have his front foot extended forward, both of them. It narrows the gap in the tunnel. We've got more chance of the halfback putting the ball in what is a tunnel. Right. Rather than rolling a straight back like that to come out behind the second rower in, into the hands of the halfback or what. Mm. It's all I'm saying. Well, you've got away there, Earl. It's just called from behind by Isaac the Burse, I think. This is Burns. Bell is on for Tim Grant, so the starting props are both off now. And Chanderell on the 30 metre line will play the ball. Playing it back for Kevin Kingston. Now for Walsh. Goes behind Bell. Decoy from him. Burns for Pertell. 20 metres out, Adrian. Picked up by Kingston. It's come away to Burns. There's a chance down the right side. Gordon picked up and driven down by McManus. Help from Sam. Penrith player still getting up. It's Travis Burns. Lachlan Coote. And this last tackle. That's the changeover. Wait there, wait there. Travis is still down, down in Somebody back hold. play. Short Oscar. side. Push up, mate. Push up. Okay, mate. Okay, Eight the points on. the difference in favour of Newcastle. And that's Tola. Friday night football this week. Parramatta winners over New Zealand defeating them last night. They play the Panthers at 7.30 in New South Wales and the Raiders will play the Broncos at 7.30 in Queensland. So 35 metres out from the Newcastle line and Giddy is getting up and getting active and here's Henry who throws a dummy. And this youngster on to do today, losing a shoe as he is tackled just into Penrith's territory. 16 goes hard for Newcastle. That's Fayoso to the 40 metre line. And Richard plays the ball. It goes again to Gidley on the blind side. He just dabs it down. The bouncer picked up by Uate. That's a freakish kick and a freakish pick up and a brilliant try. Scored by Akila Uate. Well, he's a flash, and he has great scoring rate against this Penrith team. They, they lost both matches last year, Newcastle, but he still scored four tries in the two games. He's now got five, timed his run perfectly, and the bounce was a good one for him. It, it, it bounced up and in, made it a little bit more difficult for Lachlan Coote. And Uate only needs half an opportunity. The kick was a beauty from Kurt Gidley, precision. And the bounce was a good one also for his, for his chases. That's what old Jack Gibson used to say. Only kick it as far as you can chase it. He just kicked it into open space there, allowed the oval ball to do its work. And Uate attacked the body. He got there in front of Lachlan Coop. They look to be in control the Knights, don't they? Well, they certainly managed to do one thing. They've taken the crowd out of it, haven't they? 23 years of age, this fellow. And as Andrew has often said, he's the best-looking athlete he's seen with rugby league boots on. He sounded fairly happy that his namesake, trained by Chris Lewis, the Newcastle trainer, got the runner yesterday. He's the only winner I backed. Yeah. It was a very dry day, I'll give you the tip. We all struggled. Gidley from in front. And uh, there's another two for the Knights. So they lead by 14 points as we take this break. Back in Sunday football. And I tell you what, he, he pushed the envelope. Jennings again there. I dare not go back and show you on slow-mo, but if you're looking for an example of pushing the envelope, Michael Jennings just did it again. Now here's De Goyce. Bell's trying to, uh, McHenry's trying to wrap him up. And uh, Yusufa, he's out there now, Yusufa. Here's Gidley, middle of the ground. Bootlace tackle by Lewis. See, the problem today, it's a bit like playing in heavy ground. There's Mullen again, drives it down, soaks up time. Scrum will pack and they'll work it out from that corner. But having a lead today, it's going to be awfully hard to run it down given the oppressive conditions into the dressing rooms we go and into a sling there uh, update this for me Andrew 
Costigan won't be back. You can see the sling going on there. They're going to be, cart him off to hospital now for x-rays. So uh, fingers crossed for the Newcastle Knights and never Costigan. It's OK. He's been one of the most talked about off-season purchases. Actually, 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 he played a Newcastle massive Bears. role for Wayne Bennett. Although watching them last night, I think they're going to be OK, aren't they? They're, they're still very, very good, even without Jeremy and, and never cost it in. That's Bell in 15. 16 to Matt Hilda has gone on. Chris Houston has come on. That's McKendry. And Andrew was talking about rotation. Well, that's a good tackle by Isaac DeGrace. He's hurt himself. A forward pass here. It was a latest call from dummy half that has ruled to have gone forward to McKendry. Well, let's just sum up Penrith's first half for a moment. I mean, they've been offside tenderly from the kickoff, offside tenderly from their own line dropout. Three times they've dropped the ball before fifth tackle coming out of trouble. It's pretty undisciplined, isn't it? And I, I'm making even allowance for the oppressive heat, but these are just real Everyone fundamentals. And let's go, they're virtually shooting Bind. themselves Locks, let's go. in the foot. Two hands. Yeah, that's good. Mind in there, guys. In. So Newcastle winning the scrum and Gidley trying to get around Lewis. Lewis has got him well and truly tied up with some help from Jennings. And then it's Nagama. It's come through Hilda. Gone to Feoso. And Richard will play the ball back to what looks to be a rather dazed Isaac de Goyce. Who shows it a couple of times. Gets it out to Henry. Henry on the Again, they go to Michael Gordon's side. That's the centre position occupied by Brad Ty. It's gone through from Patterson. Gidley's with the ball. Gidley gets a decoy runner, and then it's Mullen. Now it's inside. Zeb Taya. Zeb Taya gets it away. Gidley will score. Beautiful. Great, a beautiful support work there by Gidley. Nice work by Taya. But gee, didn't the hole open up there for Zeb Taya? Way too easily. They've had. Good possession, Newcastle, and controlled it well. They go the right-hand side, and it's a, it's a very simple play going across. Eventually, the hole will open up back on the inside there. Luke Lewis has gone across, but the big man, McKendry, he was slow. He didn't see the danger coming until it was too late. And Zeb Taya was able to stand up in the tackle of Lachlan Coote. And as he does all the time, Kurt Gidley staying alive after he's delivered a pass. Well, it's rule number one. When the ball goes past you, you've still got to keep closing the gaps on the inside. And that was just really lazy play from the big forward there. The ball went past him and he thought, well, it's not my problem anymore. Suddenly, Taya's coming back towards him and he hasn't closed the gap. Strolled through. But it doesn't look good for Penrith. I know we had a one-sided first half on Friday night and South Sydney excited us with their comeback, but... Gee whiz, the tent is very ordinary here at the moment. Good play by Newcastle. Look at the half-time team talk. Matt Elliott might resemble John Langs. Yeah, I'm wondering whether Matthew can import John Lang back to Penrith just for a quick half-time chat. The same one that he gave South on Friday. Here's Gidley, and he converts his own try, so Newcastle have got a big lead. 22 to 2, Richie. 22 to 2. That is a massive lead on a day like this, Andrew Johns. A massive lead, Rabs. That's oh so easy. Look at that coming back against the grain. You got to cover up on the inside, as Gus spoke about. Time That's reserve run. grade stuff. Time you run. Well, they'd be pleasing you though, by the same token. Oh, they're outstanding. The Knights. The first 10, 15 minutes, they had to defend their own line, but haven't they shown some character? Here he comes. That's Fayoso. Laid it down for De Goyce. Tola. On his own 20 metre line. Matt Hilda. Short side, short side. Gidley, they're just playing simple little dummy half runs to get them back into, into a safety zone. All Patterson was taken high and put down, not high, but drifted high. His junior south. He's causing awful trouble. 
He's going terrific, isn't he? Well, standing start there, and he just exploded back and forth. Here's Gidley running off a lovely ball from Mullen. He's inside the 30-metre line. He kicks for his winger, McManus. The ball on the ground, and it's now with Penrith. Back on their 10-metre line, Lachlan Coote. Yeah, if he had that over, Kurt Gidley might just hang on to the football. The kick was actually hit by one of the Penrith players, and that stopped it coming towards the outside chases for the Newcastle Knights. But they don't want half-time. They're on a big roll, the Knights. They'd rather it just kept going. Here's Coote. They're in all sorts, Penrith. I mean, they're, they're well down on the scoreboard, and then the heat really starts to become an issue to you because they get isolated in their own thoughts. Here's a relieving Tenley, two and a half minutes out from half time. They'd love to turn this into points. There's, there's the coach, he's not happy. I guess standing on the sideline, he understands how hot it is out there. And mentally, it becomes a real battle to stay in touch. If you lose touch on the scoreboard, and you're playing in 36 degree heat, suddenly it all becomes very, very tough. So we're signed down there saying this is our house, Penrith, the Panthers. Today, they've, they've been invaded. Trespasses everywhere. Well, Newcastle's just kicked the door open, haven't they? It's, it's like a police raid, isn't it? Yeah, they just kicked hey, the door in. Hold it, guys! So Take Penrith, with a little, maybe a little window here in front of half time. The ball from McKendry has found Bell. And a couple of these big guys are taking a long time to get back into the play. Burns away. Lewis is going to give it away. Yosef has got the ball. Does the dance. Loses the ball. And it will be a scrum which Newcastle will win with 90 seconds remaining in this first half. See, it's going to be hard for the coach too because, you know, when you... If you have to blow up at your team at half time, and coaches don't like to do it, and if you do it, you do it sparingly. But round one and 36 degree heat... I just don't know. If he gets into the dressing room, he's going to have to check the body language of his players and work out whether or not a blow-up's going to work. It, it, they may need very quiet encouragement here just to say, look, I appreciate what's going on out there, but you know, we've got to do better. And there's only 17 blokes that can do it. Are you blokes? I, I don't know that a blow-up will hit the mark today. He might be very reserved and very encouraging and see if he can't coax a little bit of effort out of his players. Just caress them, you mean? Just give them a hug. Say, look, yeah, look, it's not good, I know, but we can do better. Tola. Andrew, think about it. Uh, the six, how are you marking him coming up to the break? Yeah, I've been impressed, Rabs. He hasn't overplayed his hand. He's, he's doing what he has to do. He's making his tackles, which is the most important thing. It's a big kick from Jared Mullen here. Oh. Just on Mullen, his control and we're going beautiful. But I've been impressed with Bo Henry. Knew he'd be targeting the defence, and I think he's aiming up. It's good, good to build. First saw him play in the Arrival Live Cup a few years ago. He was the Arrival Live Cup player of the year from memory, where he went close to it. Um, and I've watched his graduation through the grades, and he's ready. He's ready. And we're ready, too, to take our break at halftime on Sunday football. Newcastle 22, the Panthers 2. Four tries for Newcastle, none there yet for Penrith. Hopefully there'll be some on the other side of this boat. Off-field discussions concerning Newcastle's future certainly have not proven to be a distraction for the Knights in their opening game against the Panthers. At the break, 22 points to two in an afternoon where you don't want to be doing extra defensive work. Well, the Knights have had plenty of possession. That pushes up the total tackles for the Panthers. The time in possession, a big one, 57% to 43. The home side got an early penalty goal, but the first of four tries for the Knights came in the 14th minute off the boot of Jared Mullen. Lachlan Coote flying high, normally takes those comfortably. Bounced off him into Brad Ty, and the kicker followed up to score the first. The second came 10 minutes later. Junior Sow down the left-hand side. He's been a real handful. Was able to beat three defenders before Kurt Gidley chipped over the top. The bounce was a beauty for a flying Uate. That was converted, and the score line was blowing out. But still time, six minutes before the break, for their fourth try. Going to the right-hand side, Kurt Gidley. Throws the ball to Jared Mullen. On the inside to Zeb Taylor. A big hole there. McKendry didn't come across. Taylor stayed alive. Found Kurt Gidley. He converted his own try. 
to lead 22-2 at halftime. Welcome back to Penrith. And, of course, this match very much getting away from the home side. 22-2 in favour of Newcastle. And some black clouds on offer around the stadium and uh, the temperatures have dropped dramatically during that break. There's a, a shot of the skyline and I think it's much more comfortable down on the sideline now, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah, it's cool. Perhaps it's dropped about 10 degrees, but unfortunately we might get wet. Well, what do you want to take? Do you want to take the heat or you want to take the damp? Take your pick. Uh, I'd probably rather get wet, actually. Just as long as you and Gus and Sterla are comfortable up there in the air conditioning. Luke Lewis leads his team back out. Matthew Elliott, an animated coach at halftime. As you would expect, Gus was talking about caressing and cajoling. A bit of love and tender care, but I don't think that was happening. Travis Burns. Big Trent Waterhouse just joined us. The first half played in temperatures. Well, the official reading was 33 degrees, but just got it up to 38 degrees at one stage. Junior Sauer, that's him, he's been good. And Shander Earl. What a commodity he's turned out to be. Bo Henry, going good. On to be. Second half underway. Jim's, I'm watching him closely. It's magnetic now, just how close he goes to putting a foot over the halfway line at the kickoff. That's McManus. Taking the typical winger's run. In the opening exchanges of the second half, Hilda. On the 40 metre line, he ran into a brick wall in Michael Gordon. This is Dan Toller. Eight metres away from the halfway line, down his own end. Running away from the northern end, these Newcastle players in the second half. Mullins kick went down the ground, stabbed. Coote back there, Lachlan trying to beat them, but they're all over them. It's, it's Fayolso who makes the tackle. He, he looks a little out of sorts today, Lachlan Coote, doesn't he? Like he normally he's really enthusiastic. He gets to the ball on the full or quickly, but he's had a couple of fumbles back there. That seems to take an age to get to the ground, get to the ball when it's on the ground. Might be out of sorts, might be feeling well. So the ball lost by the Sefa. So nothing's going right for them, not in this early part of the second half, and really everything needs to go right for them. Henry got the ball for them. Fayoso carries it for Newcastle. 12 out. Right in front of the uprights. There's the 10 metre line. Here's Henry. And he decided to have a shot himself, and they put him down hard. Burns. I should be saying welcome to first grade. Matt's gone away to Uate. He throws a ball down. It finds Gidley. Gidley finds Tolar. Tolar can't get out of the grapple there from Lewis. Picked up quickly by De Goyes. De Goyes very quick on his feet. Good reaction time. Gets a penalty. Well, they're just lazy, the Panthers. They really are. Every every time Newcastle manages to string a couple of passes together or play up tempo, the Panthers can't seem to cope. And the ill discipline is just telling against them now. Another outstanding kick from Jared Mullen putting Newcastle down in this part of the field. He's had a lot of joy kicking from the left hand side back to the right hand corners. First half he found touch three times, 40, 50 metres. And to start the second half off, he found open space. Yusefa came up with the mistake. And somewhat surprisingly, it looks as though they're going to take the two points here. Wes Naguama has gone across. Peter, what I just said about Lachlan Coote, what, what do you read of him today? He just doesn't seem himself, does he? I thought that. I know that he didn't get a good bounce on the Uate try, but there wasn't the same zip in his play. Normally he attacks everything and he plays plays very enthusiastically that's the kick I'm talking about and yeah this the, the, just the spark is missing for some reason yeah, he's not as agile he, he just I don't know he might be crook you never know but uh, he had some injury problems at the back end of last season Joe Annie reason that Kurt Gidley 
would be handing over the kicking duties. Yes, fella. He took a knock in the first half to the lower back. I understand he took a painkiller injection at half time. He's doesn't look too comfortable. He's hobbling around out there. So, so if they skip the lead, he might come off. Nagama. 22 in from touch, and he strikes it and hits it well. well another couple of points on the board for the Newcastle Knights. 24 to 2. Bobby Chu will be thinking of bringing Nathan and suggesting maybe another couple of million a year might be a better deal. Yeah. Well, Sorry, Gus, I should say, just that footage there, you can see Kurt Gilly very poppy, sort of very upright. Hold out. He may not last the duration. Brad Tide. He's starting. Down it goes. Out to bounce by Mullen, taken by Tola. Newcastle back on their 10 metre line. And as we said on Friday night, when the Roosters had a big lead, there was only one way South City could make a comeback, and that was if the Roosters gifted them possession through turnovers and penalties. And... Nagama, Nagama, a big sprint for Nagama to the halfway, and catching a ride late was Birds. They're lovely athletes, aren't they? When they that's been knocked down by the Panthers. And I think Cummins is going to pull on. Yeah, that's clever from Travis Burns. He's, he's hit the arm of the ball carry. It came out. He didn't touch it, so there was no knock on. Well, this bloke's not yes, on. Matthew Bell. Oh, dear. Drop any. Yeah, I was going to make the point that uh, they're beautiful athletes to watch, aren't they? The, the likes of Nagama and Gerardi. Gidley's coming off. Now the 24 to 2, I suppose that's a, a wise decision. The only thing is with an injury like that, once he cools down, there's probably no chance of him coming back. So ideally, you'd keep him out there until he couldn't stay any longer. He's obviously in a lot of pain and better to get him off. Joey, you're can, going to have to do it at some stage during the year. Might as well do it now. Can you get in his ear, Joey? He's in my dream team. I'll do my best, fella. <laughs> get him back out there. What about Neville Costigan? You want me to get him out there, too? <laughs> well, it's a good test. You know, he's... Uh, and Henry now have got to steer them home. They've got a good cushion and they've got a badly beaten team in front of them. There's no excuses. Okay. I don't know, but I would imagine Jared Mullen will take over captaincy now. We're playing now in the post era of Steve Simpson. So it's gone from Jared, gone to Bro Henry, gone away now to the 11 Zetayer. And here is Juarte stepping away, not down, bounces up again. Five metres diagonally, diagonally out from the upright. Oh, the, the corner post, I should say. Here's Bo Henry trying to get himself over the line in his debut appearance in first grade. Uate. Bullet-like pass out to Mullen. Turns it on the inside. Then it's Fioso and Dan Tola puts it down. So it's pretty scrappy at the moment. It is. That was an opportunity because the Panthers' defence had absolutely stopped. Look at this. Tolar's about to charge onto the ball. But there's no one really coming forward to meet Tolar. And he screams because he was just going to run that in for a try. No one was going to stop him. There, do there doesn't seem to be anyone on this Panthers side who's looking to lift them and inspire them with a one-out effort and say, well, come on, follow me. As you see Matt Bell down receiving attention... It appears as though the reshuffle in the Newcastle lineup in the absence of Kurt Gidley will see Naguama go to fullback and Zeb Taya basically play as right centre. But of course, Junior Sow left, a bit of blood coming out of the head of Matt Bell, who's been assisted off. Well, come come. Back. well, they need the skipper out there. He's got to get out there and, and lift these fellas. And as we saw on Friday night, it's possible. I mean, momentum can shift. And you can get a bit of a run on. Gidley's not coming back, and there's no cost to them. I mean, the Panthers can get on a run, but at the moment, they don't look likely, do they? No, they don't look likely here today. And only five days down the track, they've got Parramatta at Parramatta on Friday, our television match. Here's Shanderell. Didn't they look like something we've seen before from south of the border last night? from Eden Park. Sivan Asiva playing the ball on the 20 metre line. Here's McKendry. And Tola meets him and puts him down on the 30 metre line. 
Played back now, Jennings going into dummy half. Gio, we should do more of this, Michael. So here's Gordon, another of the Michaels. Have another little dart away, but the pass is ill-directed. No knock on Sid and receiver. It was all backwards. But he's held down by Houston, and there's a knock on now. Yep, late call on the Sid and receiver, attempted pick up. So what I've just basically covered up for him. Travis, has been called a knock on. Come on, doesn't matter. No, I didn't call enough. I called knock on. Comment on the sideline from Andrew. Yeah, it's gone bad for worse for Penrith. Michael Jennings is just hobbled out in the left wing here. He's looking at the bench. He's called for the trainer. I don't know if he's really hurt that hamstring or what, but it looks like a leg injury. The whole sequence of events, the sequence of events this week, or the last 48 hours, has been in and out like a fiddler's elbow for Michael Jennings. Andrew, these Newcastle halves, good opportunity for Mullen and Henry on their own without Gidley there to stamp their authority on this side because they've got Penrith at their mercy here. Well, like, they've got the option to close it down or really make a quick score here, Gus. You get the, get the feeling there could be some really some points on offer. I've been so impressed with Jared Mullen, the way he's controlled this game. His kicking game's been outstanding. The way he's organised, going from 5-8 to halfback. And he's like uh, his partner in crime, Bo Henry, has been happy with him too. Junior Sal, 30 metres away. On the eastern side of the ground, not too many over there today. Grandstand that cops the sun. Houston playing it back for Mullen. Mullen to Tollar. He'll play it in the middle, 20 metres out. Six changes, Panthers, five changes, Knights. De Goyes for Mullen inside. Fayoso backs through the gap, gets it away to Hilda. And Hilda's not down. Got over the line. Did he force it? Yes, he did. Matt Hilda has scored for Newcastle. Oh, gee. There could be plenty of points if that's the kind of defence we are going to see from Penrith in the second half. They had an opportunity to close this play down three or four occasions. Richie Fayoso going through. He gets some satisfaction. I think from memory, he started his first grade career back here at Penrith. And Matt Hilda, he's missed by Lewis. Look, Lachlan Coote had a hold on him. He brushed out, got the football down. It came loose, but the referee in good position to say that he grounded it properly. But some scrappy, grabbing defence was never going to be good enough. And Newcastle just wanted it more. Well, that's what I saw before when Tolar dropped the ball. He was going to score it. The Panthers just aren't here. There's no shoulders in their hitting. They're not setting themselves for tackles. It looks as though communication is non-existent. They're virtually sitting back and waiting to be beaten. And, and I had my concerns coming into this season for them because their back end of last year wasn't good. I know they qualified in second position, but their last couple of months of football was pretty ordinary. I think they only won about two of their last 10 or 11. And they've started off poorly here today at home. 28 to 2, about to be 30. Nagama from right in front. And he throws it over, so another two on the board as we break. It's a 28-point ball game to Newcastle. And welcome back to Penrith on coverage of this match between Penrith and Newcastle, which started out in very hot conditions. It's been tempered, though. There's a strong southwesterly, which we think will bring some rain with it. It's brought the temperatures back to a playable level, but it looks too late for Panthers. Down by 28 points. Newcastle rucking it out to the 10-metre line immediately following our football telecast, Nine News. We'll have all the latest on the disaster in Japan. Then a Sunday night special edition will follow the news of a current affair, hosted by Tracy Grimshaw with the latest on the ground from the earthquake zone. And then 60 minutes from 7.30. Oh, yes. As Newcastle go along the line and pick up Sal. Sal does a bit of brushing and then takes the final tackle right on halfway. Mullen, that's Patterson, the 15, big, standing, offloading. Mullen, Henry with the ball, right foot, inside ball. Fayoso over 30, kicks to the corner, turning Shanderul around. He should be grasping goal. And Shanderul is put down. That's a lovely exhibition of football by Newcastle. It is. The funny part here, Richard Fayoso, he, he's not a noted kicker of the ball, and you can see going through his mind, I can't believe I'm kicking this. It, it, it had the actions of a man who... Oh, OK, right, a little toe poke through. 
Ended up not too bad. I'm not sure he'll try it again in a hurry, though. Did have some good football there. The, the far end, the wide pass from Mullen to find Patterson on the fringe. He offloaded. And then a nice straightening of the play from Bo Henry to put Fayoso away it was just what was needed. As Corey Patterson brings it back inside the 30. And they've still got the full pop on. They're doing what they want to do, Newcastle. There's no resistance here from the Panthers at the moment at the door. Someone's got to stand up here and make a, and make a statement. Play by Tola. Jared, short ball. Hilda's lost it. It'll be advantage. It's still advantage for Pertell. Gets the ball on. Jennings, has he got a problem with the leg? We're about to find out. He's pulled down from behind. He'll play at eight metres from the halfway. Seems free enough in his action. Earl goes in field. Links up with Coot. Coot taken by Hilda and Fioso. Play to Earl. Gone away. Waterhouse up to the 40 and beyond. And he'll be pulled down and tackled and made to play the ball. Isaac de Goyce racking another tackle up against his name. Walsh on to Lewis. Lewis held it out through the dummy. Ball goes to ground. And I think Newcastle have been more urgent here. Although Cummins is favouring. Well, no, the other referee has gone back the 10 on the other side. So it's with Newcastle. And Fayosa, Nagama gives the ball to Fayosa. We'll play it on the 40 metre line. To de Goyce. And now for Henry. No, that's Hilda. And he'll play it five metres on his side of half row. Joyce, Mullen. Mullen running into a traffic jam. His outside players came in, the defence came out. Turn old Tola taking a shoulder charge, a full blooded charge from Travis Burns. Seven or eight metres on Penrith's side of halfway. Mullen snapping a left footer down behind Earl. In fact, it's turned around. It might have even touched him. He leant down as though he was Please. trying to retrieve it or recover it, and then it's done a nasty turn. But I think they're going to have the feed, Penrith. Combos, combos. Who's impressed you this weekend, Rabbits? Seen some good performances. Well, watching the Dragons was... A reminder that they're still the team to beat. It'll be interesting to see the team tomorrow night, the teams tomorrow night, I should say. But I was particularly happy for Parramatta with a, with a team that I thought on paper would be beaten. But Stephen Kearney has done a magnificent job. Penalty going here to Penrith. And that's for not binding and staying bound until the ball is out. What a great crowd over there at Eden Park. Over 48,000 there. Tougher for Parramatta too, great crowd support. Sydney receiver takes it in field. And of course, we pointed out we have got Parramatta in action on Friday night. It's Tim Grant back on. One thing we haven't done today is tell you that Canberra have beaten Cronulla easily down in the nation's capital. Here's Lewis running an arc on the right of the ground. And they did it, of course, without Meshes Orford, Campisi, Dugan. And they lost Alan Tung early. Here's Sivan Asiba with a handoff to Grant, who gets a ball away, and Coot was there, and Coot throws it out the back. It's picked up here by Jennings. Jennings is taken by Mullen, and players back on the halfway line. So I haven't seen the Canberra performance, Gus, to answer your question. They might have been ultra impressive. And here's the 11 now. Waterhouse to the 40-metre line. Played back and gone from Kingston. It's now with Walsh. He runs to the line. Passes long. It's hit Brad Ty nicely. He turns it in. Lewis puts a kick on. There's a, re, a, a deflection. It's gone to ground. It's dived on by Burns. Nobody wanted to know about him. And now he's started the tackle count again. It's just inside the 30-meter line. The Panthers now. Kingston away. Grant up the middle. Grant gets it to 15 meters out to the line. And he's put down by Patterson. It's gone back with Kingston to the right side for Michael Gordon. Got through one. Doesn't get through Matt Hilda though. Played back for Kingston to go away to Burns. And Burns on to Walsh. And Walsh is up to the 10. Got it on to Waterhouse. Waterhouse had a little look out there towards Jennings. But he'll play the ball. Coop stands. Offloads. Kingston. Jennings. Jennings now tries to skirt them. Run around them. Gets the ball away legally. Coop gets it over to Burns. Burns across. Down low for Lewis. Lewis puts a kick in. And it's been clutched in there by Junior Sow. That ball had beaten him, but he did well. Newcastle come up with it. And so here they are, 
bringing it out to the 20 meter line with McManus. That's uh, Zebtaya, the 11, the 8 is back out there, Kafusi. Oh, it looks like it might be a good acquisition for Newcastle. Antonio Kafusi came down from North Queensland towards the end of last season. Didn't really fire up there. No Ben Cross at the Knights this year. Looks pretty fit. There's another kick from Mullen. <laughs> Inch perfect. Play there. Okay, Ben in our seconds. You can't stay down. Sunday football on Channel 9, the first edition of our Sunday football. And, uh, no good news for the Panthers today. Down by 28. And the play back there by Michael Gordon, Kempo Shivan Asiva, taking it up the middle, but he doesn't reach the 30 metre line before Houston and Hilda stop him. Grant gets it a further five metres up the ground. De Goyce, who deserves a mention for bravery today, he's a brave little player, Isaac De Goyce. He throws himself in front of the biggest men and he's, you know, he's leech like, really. But so courageous and he's active now what's going to happen here he's going to put a scrum down with brad ty losing the ball and getting up yeah, go on, Let's go. just repeating that after the football this is what happened oh, gee. that's a shock <laughs> that's a perfect example of what you don't do well the discipline is <laughs> it's awful there's none it's the only word I can think yeah, of. It's right. awful. The only thing he got right there was he actually touched the football with his foot, but it Jared. went sideways. The They're taking a drink. We'll give you time to go and get yourselves one. 30 to 2 in favour of Newcastle. At Penrith, after the, uh, the drinks break has been taken, because of the heat, they stopped the game at the 20-minute marker in, to rehydrate. Patterson. Coming around the back is Nagama. They're trying to put two on one on Jennings. Nagama will play it 40 metres out from the line. Back to Uate. He's going down the blind side. And Shandarell is there to eventually stop him. De Goyce through tail. Hilda spinning out of a hit from Travis Burns, who he, uh, doesn't have any thought about self-preservation. Travis, he hits really hard. That ball has come off him as he attempted to play the, the man, so it's six more tackles. This is Uate. And he's just inside the 20 metre line that you can see. So he's 15 away from us on the western side. And looks like it's Tua Mavave back out there in jumper 10. Playing it on the 20 to the middle for Mullen. And Maestro. And Henry gets it to Tufusi. Big man, light footed though. Held by Sivan Asiba, picked up by Hilda, and he's tackled there by Pertel. The 12 metres out, they're still in the middle. De Goyes away, Good. Mullen, the chip into the... Oh, Coop, he did well, but I think he's he grasped in no, goal. He it over the, no, he wasn't. Line drop out, immediately following the football. As I said earlier, nine news, the presentation on the disaster in Japan, a special nine news, that's after the football then. A Sunday night special edition of A Current Affair hosted by Tracy Grimshaw with the latest on the ground from the earthquake zone. And there's a bombshell in A Current Affair as well on the Hey Dad scandal. And that'll be followed by 60 minutes at 7.30. So stay with us on not only the sports leader, but the news leader as well. Bo Henry using Chua Mavave. Back to the 30 metre line. The Olympic Network counted down to London. Kafusi. And here is the Joyce. 12 away. Mullen. The conductor. Uate back. Go oh, and running hard onto the ball was Hilda. I thought he was actually in a in a hole. Quickly away, away from De Goyce, wide for Henry. He just dummied and got a ball out the back. It was touched in flight. It's six more. Patterson knows that. And he hangs on. To shut. Play down for a new set. Junior Sal. 
getting it to a couple of meters out. They haven't got him yet. They haven't got him yet. Now they have Tim Grant and Pertell in the main. And it's played back for De Goyce. Spears it away to Mullen. Mullen looks at Hilda, looks at one outside him. Ball bounces to Duarte. Right foot step, big, spun around. Burns hits him hard over the top of the Jennings tackle. And Taya moves in a number 11 to dummy half. Takes it away from the touchline area. Goes back towards the middle. Sivana Siva jumps on board. Together there with Grant. And it will be played back to De Goyce. Now, Mullen wants it, gets it, puts a little kick in, it's a try for Henry. He scores on debut. Bo Henry, well done, son. That's a nice moment for him. Jared Mullen and Bo Henry have had very confident afternoons. Mullen especially, but Henry into the top grade. I'd say he calls for this one. And a nice little feather in behind the... The defence line there sits up nicely. Henry gets through and puts it down comfortably. Yeah, it's pretty much indefensible, isn't it? You get that kick right, so difficult for players to turn or, or to get across and cover that with the, the chase and the momentum of the man coming through at speed. And Mullen's been great. And that young man, he, he held off the challenge. Ben Rogers was in contention to possibly play at 5-8. Of course, they played Kurt Gidley in the halves. At the end of last season, he's done nothing wrong, and there's the, the smile of a young man having a good time. Yeah, all the family will have that on video, I'd imagine. It's a, it's a nice moment. I didn't give you the Toyota Cup score earlier, and Toyota, of course, sponsors of the National Youth Comp. Knight 62 beat Panthers 16. So it's been a bleak old day for the, the men from the mountains, Nagama about to convert 62 to 16, the Knights win. Well, it's now 96 to 18 for both grades here at home, round one. So, Nagama taking the shot. And there's a further two points on the board. So, let's update that score. 36 to 2 now in favour of the Knights. Andrew is with Neville Costigan. Yeah, Neville, you generally know if the injury is pretty bad, mate. What's your thoughts? Um, oh, straight away I knew I'd done something good out there and the Doc said uh, I couldn't feel nothing but I felt, you know, you know straight away there's something bad. And what about your team, mate? Your new team impressed? Oh, very impressed, you know. Uh, it's first game, you want to get a good win and the boys are going real well. I'm you know, real proud of them. Thanks, mate. Thanks for your time. And it's gone out on the fall. The restart from Penrith has sailed over the dead ball line. <laughs> um, I was just watching this bloke back there. It's Tua Mavave. He was back there. He looked like an Australian Rules goal umpire as the ball went over his head, waving and having the time of his life as it went over his head. So there was the kick. Massive. And here's the Vaughan. <laughs> He's got the hands up. Well, maybe not an Australian Rules umpire, maybe a cricket umpire. Six. That's awful from Tenrith, though, isn't it? Well, they're just totally disgruntled, aren't they? Well, it's awful. I, 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 I kind of feel sorry for them, but I don't know. How do, you, how do you turn up round one and present yourself like this? This is Hilda. De Goyce. Got a decoy from the front row. I gave it away for Henry. Henry back to Patterson. Patterson able to drop it down. De Goyce goes away. Mullen on the right. Here is um, Houston. And he'll play the ball seven away. Look at it. That's how close it is. And then it's De Goyce. Now it's with Mullen. Mullen in. Hilda busy. Here's Nagama. Wes to play the ball. Four tackles gone. And you get the feeling it's coming again. Here's Mullen. Wide for Henry. Across the face and it's beautiful for Junior. He got the ball down. The point of the spot. And he has got a double. Junior Sauer scores another one for the Knights. And cops a knock for his trouble, but he won't be too put out by that. He's had a fine afternoon, and this is a really nice ball from Bo Henry. If you've watched him in the lower grades to add a cup, the passing game has always been one of his strengths. It, it's crisp, and that was perfectly done. He ran a great line, Junior Sauer. All he wanted it was on the chest and delivered quickly, and that's exactly what he got for the number six. He ran into the hole away from Michael Gordon. Another one for the Knights. Well, that was just a training drill. That, that's something you'd see on a Thursday afternoon at training where you, 
you get a few kids to line up against defence against the side and you just run through the drill and put it down over in the corner. Nicely executed, but the defence was deplorable. I've gone past awful, it's now disgraceful. And when you think about it, they've only really got the one player unavailable today, which is Nathan Smith, I believe. I can't understand this from the Panthers. Some thoughts that they may go out looking for Tahu. Tahu might have second thoughts after watching this this afternoon. I suppose the comment that Wayne Bennett used to describe that controversial try last night at uh, Skill Park. He said, well, I thought we'd always be given a try because we didn't do anything wrong. You could use that same comment here about Newcastle today. They're leading by 166 points or whatever, and they're probably saying, well, don't blame us. We did nothing wrong. No, they've, they've been good. They've been tidy. They've been tidy, but one's going to have to weigh it up with the quality of their opposition this afternoon. Here's Nagama, and it looks good, and it sails through the uprights again. He's a sweet kicker, this fellow. There's Nagama, 42 to 2 as we take a break. Red tie. And, oh, no, they've given a penalty for being in front of the kicker. Yeah. Who's he got this time, Peter yeah. Jennings? Michael Jennings. Oh, yeah. No. 20. Number 20. In all honesty, there's the case. But in all honesty, they may as well just walk off. They may as well just say, look, we're not here, we're not interested, let's go home. You, you cannot believe that. Well, I'm going to say this, uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Michael, who's already been highlighted enough, but I think the ref could have got him a couple more times. Oh, geez, that was... I thought for a moment Luke Walsh went in very awkward and he tried to blunt the attack of Uato. He's OK, everybody's OK. Well, I'll tell you what it was. Well, we see the collision here between the winger and the halfback. He did well to get up, Luke Walsh. It's disrespectful for Michael Jennings to his teammates. It's as though, no, I'm not going to get back. How many times do you need to be told? This is Big Patterson, and he's got the ball out the back for Junior Sal. He looks at his winger, goes away from McManus, and picks up Wes Nagama. 15 out from the line for Nagama to play to Hilda. And then Patterson goes short to Sal. Sal unloads to Mavave. He's got a ball out the back to Patterson. Well, they're playing touch football, and Pertel puts it over the sideline. But all the indiscretions, all the ill disciplines, and I mean, that's the fourth or fifth restart today that they've just totally botched, is a sign of something else. Those ill disciplines are a sign of preparation and everything that's gone on through the off-season. Now, obviously, we're not at training, so we can't comment on it, but it's come out in the performance today. You turn up round one at home, you've had five months to get ready, and your fans sit here and you're down 42 to 2 with 10 minutes to play. You know, I don't care who you are, you, you've got to ask questions. Mullen now, in the base of the scrum. Henry, oh, the ball was bad ball really for Nagama. He put some depth in himself, but the ball went behind him. That's why the tackle was made by Jennings. Henry short, Uate with the ball. Cooper's with him, and now Jennings is with him as well. And Plum comes over the top. And Akila plays the ball. Henry decides to go for a blindside shot, and he's going to spin out. Oh! I thought for a moment lost the ball. The play up just short of the line. He's a little bit... He's moving backwards off the marker. I guess that's OK to put some space between yourself and the, the marker or the try line. And here is the front row forward, Kafusi. And Hilda has been good. And now Fioso makes a mistake. Yeah, Matt Hilda into dummy half with a well-earned break for Isaac de Goyes. But again, I've been really impressed well, with a number of the knives, but really like the work from Kafusi. No strapping for him. He, he had a knee problem. He's a test player. And I think a premiership winner in, with Melbourne. Well. Well. With an asterisk. Friday night football. The Parramatta Eels up against the Penrith Panthers. You liked them last night, didn't you? The Eels. Well, I, I think you're a closet Eels supporter. There you go. I do. I think you're a closet Eels supporter. I'm telling you, if you look at the, the side that he's got, 
the equipment that he's got, and I'm not going to start mentioning names, but it's a good side. To put a team together, to play at Eden Park in front of that many people and win, and I understand it wasn't that attractive. It looked like something we've seen before. But he hasn't got Slater, Smith and Cronk and English. What I saw was wonderful. Here is Jennings. You're a paramount of I'm going to stalk you and find out. So, and you live at Bondi. What are you talking about? Come out and tell us about it. Here's Gordon. They can do no wrong. Patterson's with the ball. Well, this is some dissent here from Travis Burns. He was claiming that he was tackled before he, was he received the, the football. I haven't seen it that way. Doesn't give him the he right didn't to. See that way. Did he see Petro, that way? I don't care what how he sees it. He doesn't give us a golf mate. That's what the penalty's for. Right. Yep, you heard it. Not enough. Kafusi claimed him. Earlier, he might have got an early touch. Wasn't much in it at all. Even if he did, I think what Ben Cummins was saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was so clear to the point, you know, I don't care whether I even got it wrong. You don't talk to me like that. So that's got to be. We've lost discipline in too many areas. Here's Nagama. 27 metres out from the line. And it's Houston who takes it towards the middle. Still got six minutes to go. Will they make the half century? 42 to 2. Mullen zigzag and then Kufuzi. I don't think I've seen him run as fast as this, and he's got a little bit of a step in his work as well, Antonio. Here is Chioma Vave. Matt Hilda, Matt Hilda, Matt Hilda. I thought for a moment it was going to be well seen, but. Hey, round you. You caught ball. it when he hit the ground, the ball went forward. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty hard to convince him. Are you kidding, aren't you? He hit the ground. He's, ball ground he's, still, he's still on it. Keep going, Matt, if you believe in it. Keep going. Well, I don't know. He, he might have a point. Maybe it's Delaceres that might have to have another look at it. Well, I know who'll win. Yeah, I do too. We just finished talking about the same thing. That's Earl. 15 out. The other big match on Friday night, of course, is Raiders and Broncos. Give him space. And, and this wait is there, interesting wait because there. keep in mind the Raiders have bolted in against Cronulla today. Hey, hey. Yeah, but got a bloke in front. It's not my problem. It's your problem. Yeah. Well, actually, three in front of the kick. Oh. He's pointed to Shane no, Doral, look, look but Tim Grant. Look at yourself, Petro. In front of you. A lot of blokes are having a lot to say. Mm. Make sure everyone's behind, on the line. Ben Cummins, I think, was implying that you should have a look at your own discipline. Line on, guys, on the line. Referring to the team, of course, not just to Petro. He's with the ball now, the skipper. I was about to say, Raiders today with that swamping win over Cronulla have done that for the most part without Tung, without Gilgan, obviously no Campisi, no Orford. There's a lot of people starting to warm to the green machine. They, their away record has always been a bit of a problem since the Halcyon days. Now they travel to Suncorp and uh, play in front of a, a big crowd against the Broncos coming off the back of a loss. And good news recently for them as well with Tom Leroy Lars re signing for the three seasons. That's on the back of Bronson Harrison. Pledging his future there for another couple of years as Isaac, in fact that's McManus. Scooting to centre field. We've got some, some cannonballs up front. And they've got some machine guns at the back. When they get them all out there. It's a fair arsenal, right? It's a good arsenal. Chumavave. And Hilda. Patterson just got, just got a little bit fancy there, Corey. McManus cleans up. I've always known that Matt Hilda could play football, but I'm just realising the value that he's proving today. He's, he's showing that he's got a bit of longevity about him, but 
him and DeGoyce give uh, a great dummy half service. This is Jennings zipping in, zipping out, down to the 30 metre line. With just under four minutes of the game to go, Chandler Earl. Well, his eyes lit up there, Bo Henry. The ball came loose from the Penrith player and looked like he was just going to have to pick it up and put it down, but it got knocked sideways and eventually Chandler Earl brought it, brought it out. Um, Brad Ty, dummy half, finds Travis Burns. Second receiver, Walsh, on the inside to Gordon. And Michael bouncing up and taking it on, looking for support, and there's the support. Jennings held by the scruff of the neck, gets it away to Brad Ty. Can he pass? No, it's gone to ground. And it's recovered by Mullen. Guys. Back here. No advantage, Newcastle, so it'll be a scrum that they will have the yeah. loose head and feed. And players everywhere are stretching their legs, cramping. A little lost plenty of juice out there today. And the disconsolate figure of Matthew Elliott with the bench, 40 points behind. Scrum one, of course, by Newcastle. They're out to the 20-meter line. Just talking about that Raiders match. I think you'll find that is in Canberra, isn't it? Matt, yeah, I, I've made a mistake there. I said Suncourt. Yeah, so they've got they've got the Broncos at uh, at um, Bruce Stadium, Canberra Stadium. So I'm sorry about that, but as long as we're talking about the game, that's going to get you more bums on seats down there. John McIntyre and Don Ferner. Well, I'm doing that game and I'm driving. I hope it's in camera. <laughs> it's Coot. Mullen. You see, there's an example of a, a bloke that's keen to finish off his, his work completely. He started at nine. He wants to finish at five and he wants to give you a full day's work. He's been outstanding, Mullen. And then he leads the chase in defence. Here's Brad Ty. Well, I don't know how Penrith clean this up for Friday night. It's a local derby. Maybe that'll, that'll bring something out in them against Parramatta, but they've got some real soul-searching to do this week. See the receiver running an inside line. And Chandler had it. He then got flung out of the road, and Grant gave it to Coote, and Coote gave it on to Pertell, and he'll play the ball on the 40-metre line. And uh, the sound of the whistle Just gives Penrith a penalty. Walk away. Plum and Patterson. Walk away. Just a little bit of push Walk and away. shove. <laughs> Back you Penalties Back are 8-8. Eight, eight. And there's the siren. Penrith still with a penalty to take. Benny, your whistle, mate. running the football on the last bell on the inside to Burns. They might finish with a try. They will to Lachlan Coote. Very little for the Penrith fans to cheer about. But Lachlan Coote gets the final points. And that's their first of the afternoon. They've had to wait almost, well, they've had to wait longer than 80 minutes. Well called. Okay. Oh, nice work. Inside ball. And Lachlan Coote, not his best afternoon, but nice to see him back. He got 17 tries from 20 games last year. Oh, yes. Great performance from Newcastle. Congratulations to Rick Stone and his boys. They've, they've liked the, the better pre-season. They haven't had too many bad performers. They'll be a little bit disappointed that they finished the game conceding a try, but a lot of positives coming out for the Nova Castrians. It's two stories. Knight's very confident and just how bad the Panthers were. That's pretty much the two stories out of the game this afternoon, Rabbits. Pretty bleak, weren't they? 42 to 8 is the final score. Seven tries to one. The Knights, Sow got two. Mullen, Uate, Gidley, Hilda and Henry got a try. Friday night, let me remind you that this team in black the Penrith Panthers will play the Eels at Parramatta that's our live New South Wales game Raiders play Broncos in Canberra and that's our live Queensland game
So that's cleared that up. Now, after the news, a special edition of Current Affair. In fact, the news, of course, will be focusing on the disaster in Japan. And then a Current Affair will be doing a very similar thing, I suppose, with a different angle. They'll be going on the ground from the earthquake zone. And as part of that Current Affair special, there's a bombshell, apparently, further on the Haydad scandal. On behalf of the footy team, it's good night. Here's the news.